So this evening, I'm going to take you to the movies to watch Single Molecules in Action. Um, and the lead characters uh, tonight will be small drug molecules that are designed to help repair ourselves, uh, ourselves. There'll also be some villains, though. So there'll be molecules that cause complications by sticking to medical implants, such as stents and catheters. And then finally, there'll be those molecules that assemble into fibre structures that are found in the brains of patients uh, with dementia and Alzheimer's. So watching uh, these molecules has been made possible by significant advances in the development of new microscopes. So it's really enabling us to see the unseeable down in that molecular world. And this has really only been possible using 3D computer simulations and animations like the one you see here by Drew Berry, which shows amazing molecular machines that are involved in transporting cargo around our cells. Yet, we're still some way away from visualizing the exquisite detail that you see uh, in these animations. But I wanted to hopefully demonstrate tonight that we're getting close uh, and ultimately share our big idea that we're working towards um, and that in future may allow us to directly observe molecules within our body uh, rather than on the bench uh, in the laboratory. So, believe it or not, uh, the microscope that's enabling us to do this is essentially nothing more than a record player. Yep, a record player, it's very easy to operate, it's cheap, and yet it rivals the power of the other microscopes that we use um, in the laboratory. So, in this case, the needle of the record player has been shrunk down to nanoscale dimensions. So the, that's very, very, very tiny. So if you like, equivalent to the size of a single strand um, of your DNA. And so we refer to this miniaturized record player as, atomic, as an atomic force microscope. And I'll refer to it as AFM for short. So we can see how it works in this video, although I know it's not very clear. So I'll, I'll talk you through it. So the needle of the record player could move across the surface and we shine a laser onto the back of the needle and we can detect changes in its movement. And that reflects changes in the surface topography. And in this case, it's a groove on the surface and we can record its profile in green on the screen. So we continue to scan and we can collect many profiles and build up a topographic map um, of our sample. So this is very different to a conventional light microscope where you look at your specimen. With AFM, we instead, instead we feel and we touch the surface um, to create an image. And we actually need another high resolution microscope, in this case scanning electron microscopy, to watch it in operation just as that needle moves over the surface. And just to emphasize, the very end of that tip is equivalent to the size of a single molecule. So that gives us the ability to, to have molecular uh, resolution. So recent developments in AFM has seen the speed at which you see the, the needle moving now increase by up to 5,000 times. So that enables, enables us to collect images at around 25 frames per second, and that now reaches a speed where the human eye perceives motion. But what it, what it really means and what is exciting about this is that not only can we get high resolution images of single molecules but we can also observe their dynamic motion in high speed um, AFM movies. So at this point I want to, wanted to give you some examples where we've been using this high speed capability in our lab um, to study different types of uh, molecules including drug molecules, those that stick to medical implants, and finally, those that are implicated in dementia and Alzheimer's disease, as I mentioned. So one of the important aspects in the design of an effective drug is its ability to form a complex with a target molecule. And so to observe this process, normally we might attach a beacon to light up those molecules, or we can use computer-aided simulations to analyze the docking of the drug onto its target. So in high-speed AFM movies, like the one you can see here on our TV monitor, we can now directly visualize the drug molecule A and its target molecule B as they undergo a series of interactions to form a complex. So when we watch this movie, we can see and determine how many times it forms a complex 
and for how long those complexes form. And we have the unique ability to also resolve the changes in the shape of these molecules as they undergo this interaction, which is known to be important for the activity of a drug. So we're using this as a tool to study uh, the interactions of nanomedicines. And for one of these, which is a star-shaped nanopolymer called a dendromer, we've discovered that those dendromers that show a greater degree of motion are more efficient at binding and transporting DNA into our cells to repair the damage uh, done by disease. In our lab, we're also looking at molecules called proteins that stick to the surface of medical implants, such as stents and catheters, and this causes a whole, uh, a whole series of unwanted events, including the recruitment of different cells, immune-like cells, blood cells, and eventually leading to the formation of scar tissue or blood clotting uh, around that uh, implant. And we refer to that as the foreign body response. And unfortunately, that occurs whenever, a, whenever an artificial material is implanted uh, into our body and, and can lead to severe complications like thrombosis and even facilitate um, bacterial infection. And one of the main culprit molecules that initiates this whole process is a protein fibrinogen. And computer simulations are being used to predict how this fibrinogen molecule sticks to artificial surfaces. And this molecule has a couple of hinges along its length, and it gives it extraordinary flexibility, which is believed uh, to play a role in its ability to stick to surfaces. So using high-speed AFM, we can directly observe these fibrinogen molecules, in this case, two of them on our TV monitor, as they directly interact with the surface. So now the simulation and the experimental work can complement each other, and we can also rationalize and understand our scientific observations by bringing them together. So we're interested in understanding how these molecules interact with material surfaces to help in the design of a coating that we could put onto a medical implant that can prevent these type of interactions to protect against the foreign body response. So in the last example that I want to show, it's work on investigating structures that are found in amyloid plaques uh, within the brain of patients who have dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And it's these plaques that destroy the connections between the nerve cells. And researchers have found that they are, they're comprised of very fine fiber structures, like the ones you see up there on the left in the human tissue section. But what's extremely, excuse me, extremely challenging is it's very hard to observe these fibers during their formation, especially in the very early stages. And so again, 3D computer animations can enable us to see the formation of these kind of fibers because we can't really do it any other way. So some of our recent high-speed AFM movies um, that now show the formation of these single amyloid fibrils, we believe, demonstrates that we're getting close to doing this. And what's more important is it now enables us to undertake further studies to understand how these fibers form, under what conditions do they form, and ultimately, how can we inhibit their formation? So, watching movies of these molecules is super cool, undoubtedly, um, but it's also uh, very important uh, on the pathway towards developing medical treatments and therapies. And so this brings me to the big idea, and, and we think it would be incredible if we could observe these molecules directly at their location within, within the human body, rather than running our experiments on the bench in the lab. And, and so we are making attempts at this by further miniaturizing uh, the AFM. So with our uh, big idea, uh, we have a plan to develop a high-speed AFM on a chip. It's only a few millimeters in size, and itself could be implanted into the body to collect molecules, image molecules, and sense and detect them, and beam that information back for medical diagnostics. And we're currently working on this with uh, other researchers uh, through the design of micro-electromechanical systems 
that only require very small moving parts to operate an AFM. So we're very excited about what the future in microscopy will bring, and along with it, all those amazing uh, discoveries down at the molecular world, and uh, the, the, the star movie directors will be the next generation of young scientists. Thank you.